Hey guys, it was Bambi TV. Guys, we're we'll reacting to before and after fighting Khabib. Guys, let's get straight into this. I told you guys, we're gonna make him humble. Fight fans, welcome back. You're a phony, a fake. Last year, GSP said there were three types of people in combat sports the fighters, the athletes, and the artists. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. But. With a relentless work ethic, insane natural ability, and dominance in all areas. The choice regarding Russia's undisputed lightweight king isn't so straightforward. He's so strong. Oh, the time. Now enjoying retirement, we retrace the legacy of a humble champion that never lost, never bled, and was never visibly hurt inside the octagon. That's how good Habib Nurmagomedov is. Something in a sport as unpredictable as mixed martial arts that speaks for itself. You wanna fight? Come here. Inside the cage, come. Here we look at opponents before and after fighting Habib Nurmagomedov. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. Because this is not oh. one easy fight in life or division. 16 and 0 is the mixed martial arts record, and he's just 23 years old. 10 years ago, the Russians signed the dotted line, entering the UFC's lightweight roster on a six-fight deal. Straying under the radar, he picked up his first handful of victories, dragging his opponents the distance, but crunching, mauling, and slamming them in the process. UFC record, 21 takedowns. With an ever-evolving style, Habib would beat Rafael Dos Anjos, his first top five opponent, without losing a single round. Look how aggressive this kid is. I just want to see who's got the style to handle this guy. Some were convinced, others not so much but everybody had started to take notice. I think he's a little amateur. Uh, I think that he, he needs a little work. Uh, Habib Nurmagomedov, before you were here, he's already in the press room somewhere, telling everybody that'll listen, hey, he's undefeated, he deserves to be next. Is, is, is he what you think should be next? Hey, if, he, if they want him next, give him a shot. I'm ready. It would be two years later, following a series of freak knee injuries, that Habib would finally be back in action. You're fat, you're slow, you have I, no I, rhythm. I, I can't wait to shut your face with my hand. Well, I'm gonna so. knock you out. Unfortunately, Tony Ferguson pulled out, facing health issues of his it's own. Still kind of a hard pill to swallow. Leaving Pennsylvanian Daryl the St. Horcher with the opportunity of a lifetime. Here, UFC give me fight versus Tony. 16 April, I'm here. Where's Tony? Tony's pull out? Please, shut up. I have fight. I have fight, Daryl Horcher. I have to focus this guy. I don't think you can stand with me. There's nobody on the planet who can stand with me. All I do is touch you. Whether we're on the ground or we're standing up, that's all it takes. Obviously, there was better matchup that we could have on nine days' notice than to be themselves, you know, but he's just a man. They're all the same. At the 160 pound catch weight, Horcher was a huge underdog. And as the fight unraveled, it became more and more apparent why. Big shots. Horcher's got a medal on himself. I'm gonna touch him and he's not gonna like my power. And that's the just of it. You know, this could easily be stopped. Seven and all in the UFC. Though with an embrace and show of respect, it was a night that highlighted the more amicable side of mixed martial arts. I came up short in my debut. Tough guy. When he did tonight, no one won. You know, you fight the number one guy in the division on eight day notice. You know, I lost 25 pounds in seven days. I came off the couch, I hadn't trained in months. This was my real debut. Real debut. Hmm. The guy's an animal. I truly think he is the best lightweight in the world. With Eddie Alvarez sidestepping Habib in exchange for Red Panty Night, You're I chose to whoop your next. it was another tough, quick, and confident American that would take his place. I'm about to go celebrate with my team in the back, and we're getting ready for soon. I went on that New York card. Anybody, let's First go. First of all, I have to beat Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson already beat. Tony Ferguson, Barboza, a lot of tough guys. He's not easy fight. Tony aside, Michael Oops. Johnson was the guys. only man calling out Khabib and labeling him as one-dimensional. No, I'm here to take care of business. I'm here to fight. I'm here to get a win, and uh, that's all it is. I don't think we're gonna see a new Khabib. We haven't seen him. We haven't seen him progress his game at all. I, I hope he tries to test it out on me Saturday. You know, I'm looking forward to that one. Whilst Johnson too hmm. deserves credit for stepping up to the plate. His fate was no less brutal. It almost seems like they're shocked at how strong he is. He's in there, he's pounding Michael Jones. He's like, I go to smash your boy. Make no mistake. Talking to him in the process, 
The eagle swept him up, dropped him, and then drowned him. No, I could have thrown him out of the way, but I said two times that he was going to fall. You know this, I just said. I did it because this pain, if it breaks, it won't stop. It's not going to stop. Michael should tap, or he's going to break his arm. He's going to break his arm. What a display of dominance. Both men showed respect in the aftermath. But Habib's focus quickly switched to the lightweight title and one man in particular. I want to fight with your chicken because this is number one easy fight in lightweight division. I think I deserve this, but this is up to main event because if Conor win, of course he not take this fight. Who presented the toughest challenge in your opinion? <laughs> I mean, that's got to be Khabib. I mean, come on, I mean, he's just sad. Uh... Kapi would get his shot at the lightweight strap in early 2018. But five months prior, it was Edson Barboza that would look to halt the Russians' route to the top. Khabib, I know he, he's a true fighter, but Connor, I prefer don't talk about him because he's not a true fighter. On the back of three convincing wins, Barboza jumped at his chance to face the very best. The two best lightweights in the world fighting, you know? He definitely won the best, I mean, won the best, and uh, that's making me very excited for this fight. The fight itself felt like a slow, brutal execution. You know, Jordan in his prime, you just, you just can't cover the guy. It's almost like he's the only one on the court. Yeah. Nurmagomedov, it, it was like he was the only one in the cage. Dominance by Habib Nurmagomedov. Fight Ooh. of the night, and a reminder of just how good he really was. What does make him so special? Everybody know his game. Everybody know his game plan. And nobody can stop him. <laughs> I think definitely one of the best of all the time in the lightweight. Now, if you have to give me one hour rest, I can fight one more time with Conor or Tony. That no problem. Nah, Khabib looked terrible in that fight. He's just barreling down, coming straight forward like a tank. You know, I got a little more style than I got a little more. I think it's a bit vain, but Khabib, because he's probably, I'm probably his biggest fan in the UFC, so. You really think he looked terrible in that fight? Khabib? Yeah, I, I, the man looked the same that he did a couple years ago. After another Tony Ferguson injury, coupled with some replacement drama. They checked, they looked at me, and they said, you don't look good, you can't do it. That's all that happened, and it walked out. It was Al Taipinta, a former championship wrestler with fantastic takedown defense, who'd be up next with a chance to snatch the vacant lightweight title. You'd have to pay me $2 million to fight, a million dollars to fight Khabib. I don't want to fight that guy. You see what happened to Barbosa? What nuts? <laughs> They're getting beat up to the point where they want out, and that's something that you're never going to see with me. So This week, they asked me fight with five different guys. If you can bring King Kong and he can make 155, let's go. The New Yorker's takedown defense and awareness was indeed on point. That was very intriguing was the fact that Iaquinta was able to get back up. Unfortunately for him, this was the night we found that Khabib's striking had improved greatly. Khabib was hitting his opponent and not getting hit back. Quinta's performance drew a lot of praise, supposedly laying the blueprint to beat the Russians. He's cool, calm under pressure. He got out of it, and then he was like, all right, that's it. Now I'm going to kill you. But with the American referring to him as a monster post-fight, it was still going to take something otherworldly to stop him. Now I want to fight with George St. Pierre in New York, Madison Square Garden. Hey! He's good in certain positions. He's amazing at and he's also amazing at getting to the positions that he's amazing. You're a monster to be. You're proud. Hey, 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 good job. Good job. Send a message, hey, come here, this place, and that's it. Thus far in his career, Khabib's grace and humility had repelled the majority of bad blood or trash talk. However, as we know, this was all about to change. I am going to truly, truly love putting a bad, bad beating on this little glass jaw rat. You have three, four times. You have four times. So I'll chop your head you off the like canvas, chicken. kids. With both men's personalities amplified under the spotlight, this really was the ultimate good guy versus bad guy showdown. You'll never be the artist. You will never be the artist. Insane. It will be the biggest fight in history. Fight fans were still pinching themselves as the two made the walk to the octagon. This is not 
Eddie Alvarez or Jose Aldo. This is a completely different fighter. If you want to stop it, you have to kill me. But for the cool. Irishman, the dream slowly turned into a nightmare. Connor's getting lit up. He, he begged me, please don't kill me, you know. Khabib brought his best to the octagon, which was shortly followed by his worst. I couldn't believe my eyes while it was happening. Oh no, total chaos here. A bittersweet ending to the sport's highest grossing pay-per-view. Connor gets a hard time about his, uh, about his cardio all the time, but who has Khabib faced that didn't look like that after two rounds? I, um, I just misinterpreted it. His efficiency. He was very efficient and he took he took shots well. You know, a lot of people have been asking me questions like what do I see weaknesses in, in Khabib's game or where do I think he makes mistakes and I, I don't really need him to be weak for me to be strong, you know. I, I don't need huge glaring holes. I'm gonna create them. What are your plans as champion? I just wanna mold people. This is what I wanna do. I'm gonna listen to him all night, make him tired and then make him tap. This is my plan. A year later. After putting the ugliest scenes of his career behind him, right Khabib's attention turned to another man who was tearing through the lightweight division. Dana, Sean, Khabib, let's go! Poirier didn't bring the drama like Connor, but as an all-rounder with game-changing power, it was a clash that lit up the imagination in equal measure. I'm going to make something special happen September 7th in Abu Dhabi. I'm going to shock the world. We saw a more yeah, cautious version of Dustin in Abu Dhabi. You have to push him back a little. Haven't. We haven't really seen that out of anybody yet because they're so worried about that the speed of that shot. And ultimately, despite having success of his own, he was overpowered and submitted in the third. Under the chin, there's the tap! They know what he wants to do, they can't stop it. A great show of respect capped off another of the lightweight division's hottest showdowns. If anything adversity's taught me in the past, is when times are good, be grateful. And when times like this, be graceful. And his hand, his feet are like hands, like his foot sweeps and, and the way he breaks you down, it's, it's good, man, he's good. So good. You know, people know who both of these guys are. They know what they're both capable of. And that's why this fight is so big. It's going to cause him some serious, serious issues in there. He's not going to be able to do what he wants when he wants. In a promise to his family, Fight Island would be the last time we saw Khabib defend his crown and unbeaten record. I was born and I was bred and I was raised to do this. And I will do it till the wheels fall off. When he's on his feet, I will be causing massive damage to his legs, to his body and his face. An elite wrestler, a devastating striker, and a man with newfound composure, Wait. Justin Gagey was considered the man with the best chance of dethroning the champion. He should be afraid. Gagey should be afraid of the takedown, which he will be. And with one of the most exciting styles in the game, no trash talk was necessary. Everyone knows this is the best fight at 155 pounds, and we are finally he here. He pointed at him and said, you have jet lag. During the fight? During the fight. He said, <laughs> you have jet lag. He said, Gagey said, no, I don't and hit him with a left hook and an uppercut. Left hook up top from Gaethje. Though, what was supposed to be the roughest, toughest night's work of Khabib's career is made to look like another day at the office. Just Justin Gaethje to sleep. He does things to world-class guys that makes you just confused. Khabib told his own corner to quiet down as the fight ended, which speaks for itself. And Gaethje's humble response and defeat might even have gained him more fans than a victory. Don't want to imagine, you know, what he was going through. But uh, as soon as the fight was over, I went up and told him that he just made his father so proud. And uh, I was, it was, you know, he did. As we look below. <laughs> Guys, this was beyond incredible. Like this, this is a standout record. Like he's, I feel if he was to graduate from school with his level, he's going to get a 4.0 GPA, bro. Just, this is clean. <laughs> bro, like, how can you talk trash and still lose? Bro, like, every man has pride and you walking out from there losing is going to mess up with it. Like, I still, I'm trying to comprehend. You know, different people have come in there and lost. And you still want to talk trash about him. Like, how if, uh, he's a legend. His name is going to go down in history as one of the best. Bro, this, this, this was... 
this was something new, right? This was something new. But I don't really think about that. Don't really think about this. But I honestly love them. I have actually watched his fight before, though. This is like, I know him. I know he's a fighter, but like, I haven't watched that. Yeah, I think I'm missing on. I think I'm missing. I think I'm missing on a lot. I think I'm missing. But guys, anyway, think about this. Special to like, share, subscribe to my channel. If anything like is coming up, hit me up in my comment section. Or hit me up on Instagram, please. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.